This video is a brief summary of how to calculate an effect size using hedges G. So remember, effect sizes helps us define the magnitude of difference, the practical significance between two groups. And we're going to use hedges G because it has a correction factor for when assessing groups with small sample sizes. So typically less than 30, which is what we would find in sports science and, and teams that we might test. So the calculation is based on this paper here, which is that of Lakin's. And here's the calculation provided for Hedges G, which uses Cohen's D, and that's, that's Cohen's DS, to say that this is an effect size calculation looking at a between group difference. And the calculation for this between group difference effect size is over here. I'll just show you where they are. So here's the effect size. You can see this is the correction, the hedges G correction factor just here. And this is the Cohen's DS uh, calculation over here. So then in terms to uh, calculate the confidence intervals and the confidence intervals mean that we can take our point estimate and we can put these intervals around it such that we can make inferences to the wider population from which that sample was drawn. And here's a, here's a, a definition of confidence intervals for, for you to uh, read over because confidence intervals can be something that's quite hard to explain and something that's quite hard to appreciate. And the calculation of these confidence intervals is based on this paper here. And in particular, you can go and look at the uh, different equations that are used. So here's the effect size. And of course, it's minus 1.96, which would be 90, the Z score associated with 95% uh, confidence intervals multiplied by the standard error. And the standard error is calculated as follows. But because we're using small samples, we would typically have to use a t distribution which is good for samples again that typically are less than than 30 people so what we've got here is our calculation for the standard error just as as we saw in that equation and then we've calculated the t score but in in calculating the t score and this is um done automatically in Excel, you just need to let it know the degrees of freedom and the probability value that you're working with. And of course, the probability value is just the inverse of whatever confidence level you want to work at. So I've been looking at 90% confidence intervals, which I think is, is fine in sport. But if you prefer to go convention, conventional, then you can go 95% confidence intervals. And of course, the inverse would be that probability, which would be 0 0.05. So Using this function here and using the degrees of freedom, we get our T statistic. Now, 90% confidence intervals, if it was a Z distribution, would be 1.64. So you can see it's a, a little bit higher as a consequence of having a smaller sample. Again, if I put that at 95%, you'll see that rather than being 1.96, which would be the Z score equivalent, is 2.03. But that number would increase just by virtue of increasing the, the, the sample size. And the degrees of freedom is calculated as follows, is group one plus group two, and then you minus two. So all of this is, is calculated automatically. You just need to change the numbers um, underneath these red headings here. What we've got as well are these qualitative descriptors, which uses an if function. And these are currently set to use a threshold set by Cohen, but they're good when you have no other thresholds to go on and no other descriptors to go on if indeed you feel you need them. But if you have more appropriate ones to your data, so you should absolutely use that and use things like the smallest effect size of interest. So. All that happens here then is we minus, we take our, our point estimate for our effect size and we minus one of the um, confidence intervals from that. And then on the other side, we, we add it and then we get our range of scores that are compatible with our data. Now, if you want to add more rows into this, then you can, of course, just highlight all across and you can you can pull the data down and add as many different cells as you like. Now, once you've done this, 
you can then look at the data in terms of forest plot. So here we have one set up for the data we've just analyzed, but in terms of how to set this up, if I just highlight here quickly how you would do that. So if we go into scatter and we're gonna go with smooth lines and markers, you can see we start to get this data here. If I just click on it as well, I'm gonna select data. Let me just put the name in first. So the name was group A versus B. That's fine. Now we can go ahead and add another series. So the name this time is C versus D. The X values, so those going across are these values over here. And then the Y values are here. And that's just so that we can get it in this horizontal markers as, as we can see. And of course we can, we don't really need these other cells here. Um, and in terms of this, we can format axis, uh, labels, and we can just click none. So here we can get our analysis. And of course we can go on and we could add another uh, series if we wanted to, if we had more data to make the comparison. In terms then of interpreting our analysis, we can say something along these lines that in terms of A versus B, so this is here, this is um, would be here where, where number one is, then we would say that team A demonstrated a small to larger increases in, in jump height compared to team B and we could do the similar to, to Team C.